Hello and welcome back. Since the beginning of this course, we are using Jupyter Notebook to execute our Spark workloads. But in a general production scenario, the Spark workloads are executed with Spark Submit command line utility. Today we are going to make two incremental loads. One is for SCD1 store dimension and another is for customer SCD type 2 dimension. We are going to use Spark Submit utility to run that incremental loads. The benefit of Spark Submit utility is it provides us flexibility to execute our Spark loads with multiple cluster and client features. You can define the number of executors, you can define the number of cores for the cluster, you can define the master whether it would be a local execution, a yarn execution, or it would be executed on a Spark cluster. Now, if you are new to this series, I would recommend you to go back and watch our playlist from the beginning. I am in my Jupyter Lab environment. Let's go ahead and see the changes in the data files that we are going to receive as part of incremental loads. As you can see, for store, we are going to receive a data file with a run date of 2022-0104. If we open the file, we can see we have changes in the phone number for two of the stores with store ID 004 and 006. For customer, we have incremental file with the same run date 2022-0104. We see for two of the customers, there are change. One customer has a change in the plan type and another one has a change in the phone number. Since customer is a SCD type 2, we will see how the history records are maintained in a SCD type 2 after the data load. I also made change in the get run date function that we are using since the beginning to get the run date for the workload. We made a small change in the get run date function to read the run date from the command line. We use sys.argv and 1 as an index to read the run date from the command line. Now before we can execute our spark submit commands for our workloads, we need to convert our IPython notebooks into Python scripts. Jupyter provides a fantastic command to do it. Let's open our terminal, change the shell to bash. Now we need to run this command to convert all our store IPython notebooks into scripts. Let's run this command. As you can see, all landing, staging and dimension notebooks are converted into Python notebooks. Let's refresh our panel and we can see the Python notebooks present. We can open any one of them to verify. We can use this script to run into Spark Submit and submit our workloads now. As usual, I place the incremental files for store and customer in the landing directory of AWS. Let's go and verify each of them. For store, we can see the 202201.csv incremental file present. And same is for customer. The file is present in AWS S3 bucket. Now we can go ahead and run the landing load for store and customer. Subsequently, we can run the staging and dimension loads. We also need to convert our customer IPython notebooks into Python script. Let's do that as well. Awesome. All three notebooks for landing, staging and dimension is also done. Now we can run the spark submit command starting from landing till dimension for each store and customer one by one. Let's load the data for store first. Now if you can see my screen, I am using the spark submit command with the master as local and I am using the store landing python script and I am passing the run date as 2022.0104 from the command line. We will be logging everything into store underscore ld dot log. Let's run this. Landing load for store is complete. Let's validate the login. I can see store underscore ld dot log is created. If I open this log, as you can see, the run date is read from the command line, which is 2022.0104. If we scroll down, we can see everything is written. The number of output rows is 2 and the symlink manifest file is also generated. Now let's trigger the same load for staging and dimension one by one.
the staging load is also complete. Let's trigger the dimension load. We concluded the data load for store and customer now. We fast forwarded the data load for customer. As you can see, all the log files for customer and store has been created successfully. We created one new notebook called Validate Data, which we will use for the data load validation. Let's run the cells to validate our data. As you can see, the changes for the store are reflected properly. We have the new phone number reflected for the store ID S004. Let's validate the data for customer as well. Since customer is a SCD type 2, we can see the history is preserved. We can see for the plan type, the changes is reflected. You can see the effective start dates and effective end date are changed accordingly. Again, we have the old record is marked as inactive with 0 as active flag and the new record is marked as active with 1. In this fashion, our customer dimension is storing the history records. Let's stop the Spark session now. Today, we completed the incremental load for our data loads using Spark submit command. In next video, we will run our analytical queries in Athena to generate our reports. Keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.